Good day, everyone. Um, today, we're going to have our fourth lesson in EAPP. But before that, let's first have a movie guest. So I know even if this is just a recording, I also want you to experience what they have experienced in this activity or in this game. So before that, uh, I'm going to give you maybe five or eight seconds for you to guess the movie. So you could just guess it in your own while you are watching this. Okay? So what you're going to do is you have to guess the title of the movies based on the given statements. Okay? So I will give you eight seconds for you to uh, think of that movie and then you could answer it. You could answer it in your own. Okay? First movie. So guess the title of this movie. So this is the statement that will give you the clue of that movie. An arrogant prince turned into a monster until he learns to love and be loved in return. Okay, so that is Beauty and the Beast. Next movie. A genius level high school student makes money after developing elaborate methods of to help other students cheat. Okay, so that is bad genius. Next movie. Four English siblings have their adventure in a magical world inside a closet. Mano mano talaga yung pagbibilang natin. Okay, so that is Narnia, The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe. Next movie. A mother and her two children make journey to reach safety from an unseen creature who drives most of society to suicide as they see them. Seven, six, five, three, two, one. Okay, so that is Bird Box. Okay, next movie. A pair of teenagers with cystic fibrosis meet in a hospital and fall in love. Though their disease means that they must avoid close physical contact. Okay, so that is five feet apart. Last movie. The heroes must assemble once more and do whatever it takes to restore the universe and bring those they lost back. Okay, so that is Avengers Endgame. Okay, so what have you observed from those uh, movies or from that activity? How are you able to come up with those answers if you really answer? How did you come up? Okay, I think it's very hard to ask this kind of question even if I really know that uh, I'm not talking to anyone for, the, for this present time. Okay, but definitely you come up with that answer because you have watched the movies and you know what the movie is all about. Okay, and uh, from that, uh, we have different strategies in reading academic text. And one of those strategies is summarizing. And when we say summarizing, you are writing what the material is all about. Okay, so definitely, those statements are summaries of that movie. Those are one-sentence summaries of the movies, okay? Now, what we're going to discuss today is not just about summarizing, but the other ways to condense a text. When we say condensing text, it, uh, you are making the text shorter. So aside from um, summarizing, there are other methods, ways on how you're going to condense at X. Okay, so let's proceed. So for today's agenda, we're going to identify the ways of condensing text. 
we are going to use various techniques in summarizing and paraphrasing a variety of academic texts. And lastly, outlines reading texts in various disciplines. Okay, so that is our objective or goal for this lesson, okay, for this week. Now, let's proceed with summarizing. I have here the original text and the summarized text. I want you to uh, observe what happened to the original text as it was summarized. I will read the original text. The ancient masters might not know it, but studying their teachings can increase one's intelligence quotient, or IQ. Pondering over what they said, which have been passed on through their writings, as well as from other sources compiled by scribes and chronicles, could greatly benefit us who are living in today's technically driven society. Sorry. So the summarized text uh, becomes like this, okay? So reflecting on the teachings of ancient masters written and compiled by writers help us in this modern world. As what you can see, the text is being compressed. The text is being condensed or the text became shorter, okay? But aside from that, you can see that uh, in the original text, the text is very specific when it comes to the details but in the summarized one uh the text uh became generalized okay because when you are summarizing you are generalizing text you are getting what the material is what the material is all about okay the overview a specific thing okay and it's not when we say material it's not just the text it can be movies it can be stories it can be songs any material okay so summary is not just applicable for the texts or for academic writing but in air in anything any material okay now what is summarizing it says there that it is a process that involves condensing the text into a shorter form just like what i've told you earlier next one it involves getting only the most important parts of the material Okay, for you to summarize a text, you just have to get what is the most important idea or, yes, part of that material. What does that material really wanted to tell the readers or tell us? Or if you are the writer, what is your material, material really wants to tell the audience? Okay, so a summary is normally one-third the length of the original text. So, for example, your... Uh, material or your essay is three pages composed of three pages so if you're going to summarize that it should be one page okay but actually it's not applicable all the time it only says that it is normally one third okay but not all the time one third because i think that one one page summary can still be long it depends on what you are going to summarize okay so that's summarizing Next, this one is an example of paraphrasing. So don't be confused between summarizing and paraphrasing. So let's read uh, the paraphrase one because the original text is just the same with the first text that we have read. Okay, so the paraphrase text goes like this. It says there that, an analysis and study on these teachings of the ancient masters can improve our intellectual aspect reflecting on these teachings which writers compiled could benefit us in this modern world so what have you observed um with the paraphrased text is there any difference with how it is being summarized okay uh, as what we can see there are terms that were changed so for example in the original text it uses the word intelligence quotient but in the paraphrase text they only used uh, intellectual aspect another example is they they use in original text they use pondering over what the material said but in the paraphrase text they said reflecting on these teachings okay so when we say paraphrasing it entails the use of rewording. When we say rewording, you are changing the words. 
and rephrasing. When we say rephrasing, you are changing the phrase. You are changing the group of words. You are changing the structure. Structure of the words or the sentences of the, from the original text. Also, ayan, the rewording and rephrasing are done to achieve the clarity of the text. So as what you can see in this example, the original text is kind of bit uh, maybe hard, harder to understand than the paraphrase one. Because class, when we say paraphrasing, it doesn't only aims to avoid plagiarism, but when when we are paraphrasing, our goal is also to simplify the words. Simplify the words we are using for the readers, um, for the readers to understand the text more. Okay? So the original text is uses um, deeper terms, more formal terms, while in the paraphrase one, you are using more simpler or, or simpler words, okay? You're using sim simpler words. Okay, for you to achieve the clarity of the text or make the text clearer. Okay, and lastly, a paraphrase material is usually the same length as the original text. It doesn't say that it is applicable all the time, but it is usually, usually the same length. So as what you have observed, uh, it, is a, it is a little bit shortened, but not the way as it is shortened and summarized, okay? So normally it is, or usually it has the same length as the original text because in, in, in paraphrasing, you are just changing or making it in your own words, but the details are still there. The thoughts are still there. The concepts are still there. Okay? So that's, para, that's how you do paraphrasing. Next. Uh, this is an example of outlining. So the topic is different from the first examples given. So I will read the original text. It says there, the peacock is the national bird of India. They have colorful feathers, two legs, and a small beak. They are famous for their dance. When a peacock dances, it spreads its feathers like a fan. It is a long, shiny, dark blue neck. Peacocks are mostly found in the fields. They are very beautiful birds. The females are known as peahen, their feathers are used for making jackets, purses, etc. We can see them in a zoo. Okay, so the text is all about peacock or details, informations, um, trivia, description about peacock. Okay, so this is an outlined one. Uh, class, when we say outline, uh, you can do that in, in different ways or in way which you found it more comfortable or more appropriate so this one is an is just an example format but you can do another format for that outline okay so it says there as what you can see the main or the topic is the peacock and then under the peacock there are bullets the description of the peacock it is the national bird of india they have colorful feathers two legs and small beak they are famous for their dance they're mostly found in the fields and you can even add so, for example, you can add another bullet to say that uh, the female are as known are known as peahen, or you could also add another bullet to say that the female's feathers are used for making jackets, purses, etc. Okay. Now, uh, what have you observed uh, with that outline? How was the transformation from the original text to the outline one? Are they being condensed? Yes, of course they are. So when we say outlining, it is a process of organizing information gathered from reading. So definitely, class, when you are doing the note-taking, you are also doing outlining. Okay? It only depends when you are, when you are, if you are not outlining while you are note-taking. Baka mamaya ang ginagawa nyo pala ay parang collage. Or parang, ano yung tawag dun? I don't know what, what it is called. Okay, but definitely or usually when you are note-taking, you are doing outlining because you are writing the topic and you are, note uh, you are writing bullets or you are writing the specific information, the important terms and their meanings and even examples. Okay, but maybe 
uh, you you may not be doing the right way of outlining or you may not be doing the right format, okay? Or more organized format. Now, class, I will teach you how you're going to do that outlining, okay? So when we say outlining, it, oh, it uses outline, of course. And when we say outline, just like how I described that on the previous lesson, when we say outline, it is the backbone of the material. Or it is also a skeletal framework that includes the idea separated by specific heading and the uses of number system. So later on, I will uh, show you the number system or numbering system. Now, outlining makes it possible for you to arrange the details, the ideas, and example based on importance or chronology. So it, it still depends on you how are you going to organize your idea because uh, maybe you could, you could put the most important here and then you could just leave out the, the other details under that or maybe you could, uh, you could write the first example given or the first detail given and then the rest just like uh, what we have done or what, is, what was given in the example. So as what you can see, the outlined one here says that uh, the peacock is the national bird of India followed by they, are, they have colorful feathers. So they are arranged based on chronology. Based on the sequence, uh, the sequ based on the sequence given on that original text, okay. So it's up to you. How are you going to arrange that? It can be based on importance or it can be based on chronology, okay. Now I have here, or I will give you the three types of outline. First one is the topic outline. Second one is the sentence outline, and the last one is paragraph outline. When we say topic outline. From the word itself, topic, it only includes specific words or phrases. Okay? It doesn't need to be a full sentence. So, an example for that is the table of contents. So, as what you can see in the table of contents, what you can only see there are the titles or the topics of your top the topics of that book, or maybe that module, or whatever it is, whatever material is that. So you can only see the topics listed there. So they are outlined. And that is an example of topic outline. Okay. Um, the next one is the sentence outline. Okay. So when we say sentence outline, it includes full sentences. So for example, you are going to write about the online class. Okay. So your topic is about the online class. So Maybe you let, let's say that you are going to write an essay. Then your topic is an online class. So maybe you could write introduc here in introduction. After that introduction, you could write the full sentence. For example, what is the first sentence that will be discussed? Maybe you could write there on online distance learning is the new method or ways to uh, ways in learning. Sorry, it is a new way in new way of conducting a class in this during this pandemic. So it can be like that. So online class or online distance learning is the new method of conducting a class during this pandemic time. Okay, period. And then next next sentence, maybe you could um, you could write the advantage or disadvantages, it depends on you, or maybe the problems, or maybe your thesis statement. So it should be in a full sentence. So that is an example of a sentence outline. What you are going to write with those outline are full sentences, okay? And when we say paragraph outline, it uses or it includes paragraphs. So maybe in, in introduction, you could put the whole paragraph there, then the body whole paragraph there, then the conclusion whole paragraph there, okay? So those are the three types of outline. Next, now class, when we say numbering system, uh, it can be a traditional or it can be a modern. Uh, sometimes it is also called as traditional outlining and modern outlining. So as what you can see, in traditional outlining, it uses Roman numerals, it uses letters while in modern outlining it only uses numbers 
Okay? So, let's proceed with the traditional first. For example, your topic is about uh, the issue in field health. Okay? So, your topic is about the issue in field health. Okay? Then, uh, what you're going to write there in first, uh, in one, or in the first Roman numerals, maybe you could write there the introduction. Then, under that introduction, in letter A, maybe you could... Uh, write the function or the definition or what is pill health. Okay? And then in letter B, maybe you could write the, uh, uh, what do you call this? The function or the purpose of pill health. Then if you're going to write the purposes of pill health in letter, in letter B, you could, you could have the numbering. So number one, what is the number one function or purpose of pill health? Okay, to provide medical insurance, whatever. And the number two, what are the other functions? And the number three. Okay, so those are uh, how it will go. Th those are uh, the example of a traditional outlining. But when we say modern outlining, okay, so it only uses number. Okay, for example, your introduction. Number one, introduction. Then under that, 1.1, that will be uh, the definition or what is field health. 1.2, what are the functions of field health? So if you're going to discuss the functions of field health there, maybe you could you could write it 1.2.1. Okay? And then if there are other functions of field health, you could write it as 1.1.2. 1.2.3. Sorry, I get confused. I, I'm not good in numbers. Okay, so it will goes like that. Okay? So that is modern outlining. But for me, I think the traditional one is better because I think uh, the modern outlining is kind of a bit confusing. There's there's so many numbers out there. Okay, but it, it's up to you. So it also depends if... To your, it only it also depends to your teacher, okay? Maybe your teacher requires you to use traditional outlining or modern outlining. It's up. It depends. Okay, so those are the two kinds of numbering system. If you have questions or clarifications, you may just uh, ask me or you may leave a comment or you may send me a personal message. You, you may also chat in our group chat. Uh, for you to clarify something or for you to ask questions. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you, and see you in our next lessons. Bye!